Chapter four, Harmony. I'm, I'm brought out of my pleasant sleep by the sound of my phone vibrating next to me. Eyes still closed, I reach out a hand and blindly fumble around from my phone until I feel the cold metal in my hands. I open my eyes and see the name Shu on the screen. More awake now, I slide my finger over the screen and answer it. Hello? Hey, what's up? What do you mean, what's up? You're the one who called me. Oh, someone sounds grumpy. Didn't get enough sleep last night? Shu, it's 7.45 in the morning, and we left your house at like 12 in the morning. What do you want? Shu laughs, but I fail to see any humor right now. All right, all right, sorry. You're worse than Shinji. I just wanted to see if you wanted to hang out today. Shu is... I, Shu doesn't strike me... Well, maybe that's not Shu. I think Shu does strike me as a morning person. Yeah, he does strike me as a morning person. You know, since we're friends now. Oh, and, and do what? I was thinking we could go shopping? 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 Oh, wow. I didn't see Shu as the shopping type, but that's pretty awesome. I know a lot of fun places I could take you. Yeah, fine. Just, just let me go back to sleep. Shu laughs again. Okay, then meet me at 9, and I'll text the dress to you. Don't be late. We hang up, and I don't even get a chance to put the phone down before I fall asleep again. Couldn't we make it like 11? Or one, <laughs> if I really want to fall, if I really want to sleep. I wake up with a start, squinting at the bright daylight streaming into the window. I sit up and look at the phone in my hand, wondering if the phone call was all just a dream. No, there was definitely an answered call from Shu earlier. I check the time on the phone, 8.36 a.m. I feel like there's something I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, I need to get ready. I put the location Shu ga uh, gave me into my map app. It looks like I can still make it there if I rush through the, my morning routine. He better be buying me breakfast. Who meets last minute this early on Saturday, really? I mumble to myself and I'm generally grouchy all throughout getting ready, but I am curious as to where he's going to take me. When it comes time to pick out an outfit, I get anxious. This isn't a date, right? After a few moments of indecision, I realize that I'm being ridiculous and choose something normal. Oh, couldn't I choose? I wish I could choose my outfit. That would have been really cool if you got to choose what outfit, even if it had absolutely no effect on the overall storyline. That would have been a really great opportunity here to add that really cool thing. And you could update the sprite according to what she was wearing. Alright. It's, we're just gonna wear the exact same thing we've been wearing this entire time. <laughs> but it looks like Shu and everybody else is the same way. <laughs> hey, Arkura. I walk up to Shu and Shinji who both easily stand out in the crowds. Shu with his bright orange jacket and tall Shinji with his purple hair. I glance at Shinji and he looks like an expressionless zombie. Hey. Hey, tired Shinji? He only grunts in reply and I suppress a giggle. Shu steps closer to me and grabs my hand, surprising me. Just go with it, squeeze his hand. Why does he keep grab why does he keep grabbing my hand? Squeeze his hand. I automatically I automatically give Shu's hand a little squeeze. It feels so strangely natural to be holding hands like this. Oh, cute. His hands are always so warm. It's so nice. So what's the occasion? And where are we going? You've had to deal with all the studying and doom and gloom of the supernatural world for the past few weeks. But today, I want to show you the fun side. Come on. Whoa. Shu takes off running, pulling me along with him. I glance back at Shinji, who's striding after us, a small smile on his face. Oh, he knows what's he knows what's going on here. Shinji understands. After a few minutes, we arrive in an easy-to-miss back alley. It's pretty narrow, and there's seedy-looking establishments all around. Uh, why are we here? Oh, yeah, I guess it does look pretty shady. But just give me a minute, and I'll show you. Shu drops my hand and walks to a wall. He puts a hand on it and looks back. Are we about to go to Diagonally? Or, or Diagonally? Diagonally. I do too and see that Shinji's just walked into the alleyway. We all good? Shinji looks at the sidewalk behind him and nods. Yeah, this is Diagon Alley. I turn back to Shu and see that the concrete wall around his hand is pulsing and changing. The waves gradually spread to the entire wall and then the wall itself seems to just fade away. Oh my gosh. Really? I can see the sky and the sidewalk that appears to lead into another part of the city. It's as if the wall was never there. In complete wonder, I slowly walk towards the area where the wall used to be. Pretty cool, right? There's a lot of entrances like this all over the city to Chua or Shua or Shua. Chua? Chewbacca? 
Chua? It's a magical district where lots of supernaturals live. Some humans live here too. Really? Optim Eyes, White Owl Apothecary, Enchanted Flowers, The Crystal Ink, Crystal Inn, Chocolate Magic. Ooh, a lot of people want to go there, I'm sure. Dolce Delizier. Filter Your Life. Get Out and Play, Blue Sky Cafe, Flourish, The Vintage Lounge. I'm just. Some of these signs are pretty interesting. Starry Night, Game Guild, Otaku Game Shop. Cool. La Costa, a spirit. Okay. The Wandering Pen. Hmm. You can buy a lot of cool stuff here too and eat things you'd never be able to find anywhere else in Japan. Oh, I want to go here so badly. Especially if, if Shu's the one that's taking us. If she, especially if Shu's the one who's like, you know, showing us around. That'd be super cool. Sounds exciting. What are we waiting for? Let's go. I can't contain my curiosity and I quickly start walking. This time I grab Shu by the hand as we go into the Chihuahua. The Chihuahua. I'm calling it the Chihuahua district. I know that's not how Chihuahua is spelled, but it's such a fun word. We move along the sidewalk and I look around at all the unfamiliar shops in awe. Hardcore, you look like a tourist with your mouth hanging open like that. Well, I can't help it. I had no idea this place was even here. Just wait until you see the upscale part of the district. I haven't eaten since 6 a.m., so I'm starving. Want to go get a late breakfast? In what way is 9 a.m. a late breakfast? Aren't you tired? Nope! It'll probably hit me all at once later tonight. But for now, I'm good. Yeah, let's go to let's go to Blue Sky since we're so close. Yes, the Blue Sky Cafe. Sweet, sweet. I'm gonna get some fruit, I think, or maybe pancakes. Hmm, do they have omelets? I could go for one right about now. Oh, Harkora, you too? How can you stand eating eggs like that? Huh? What? What's wrong with eating eggs? Did he- oh, is it because- is it because Shu hatched from an egg because he's like part phoenix? Is that why? Don't worry about it. Shu's species just has this thing about eating birds. Yeah, and it's bad enough I have to see Sinji sh stuffing his face with them all the time. Oh, he doesn't like chicken! That's so adorable! Good thing for me I'm more of a seafood kind of person. We turn into a large building and Shu takes, makes us take the stairs to the second floor. It's better for your health. When we get there, we head to the Blue Sky Cafe. The cafe is surprisingly nice and yet manages to have a cozy feel. The guys spot a table and I follow them, staring at the view of the district below the whole time. We sit down at the table and are given menus by the waitress. After ordering water and pancakes, I look around at the other patrons. Are these really all supernaturals? Mostly, there's a few humans here too. I hesitate before asking an odd question that I, quite frankly, never thought I'd have to ask anyone. Are you human, Shinji? As far as I know. Yeah, he is. We met in all we met in an all human junior high. Well, well, all all human and one phoenix. Shu laughs. Yeah, I guess that's right. Anyway, I've been going to human schools for years. Why is that? Oh, is it because of your... They're usually a lot more fun to be with than Phoenixes anyway. An uncomfortable silence falls before us. Falls over us. I grab my drink and sip slowly, looking away from the table. There I go again, making things weird. Two people walk into the already bustling cafe. A rather good-looking man and a pretty woman. They're walking unusually close to each other. When they pass, I see that they're holding hands. I'm reminded of the way that Shu often grabs my hand, like he did this morning. Does Shu ever think of me that way when he grabs my hand? Does he know what that what it means? I glance over at Shu and notice that he's watching the couple too. There's a strange expression on his face as they take their seats across from us, talking and smiling. Shu is a cute guy. Jeez, you're just you're just realizing that now, Parkora. Surely he must have had some girlfriends before. Ooh, there's a sign. Harkor is getting kind of jealous. Ooh. For some reason, my stomach knots when I think of this. Yeah, see, 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 see. Oh no, it can't be. No. Are you okay, Harkura? Huh? Oh, yeah. Make sure you tell us if you're not feeling well. If you think you're not feeling well, or you know. Shinji lowers his voice at this last part and I'm snapped back to attention. I nod and am willing myself to calm down. After that, I do my best to ignore the positively lovey-dovey couple in our view and eat my breakfast in peace. But Shu has been unusually quiet since I put my foot in it. 
I have to wonder what he's thinking. Maybe he's mad at me, or... I notice that his eyes have been completely focused on his bowl of fruit, looking absolutely nowhere else. I stare at Shinji, silently willing him to do or say something to break the silence. He glances up at me and puts his bite of steak down. Steak for breakfast? Steak and eggs, yum. Wonderful we'll see Tatsuya today. Shu stops his staring contest with his fruit for a moment and looks at Shinji. Uh... Yes, it worked. Thanks, Shinji. Huh? Why would I care if we saw Tatsuya? Shu, darling, I haven't seen you in ages. Oh, is this an ex-girlfriend? Ooh, I like her. She is a pretty girl. I love her earrings. Why haven't you come to visit me? We all look up at the blue-haired woman who just appeared to be... Uh, who just appeared seemingly out of nowhere. Her white sundress swaying gently and is the only indication that she recently walked up. Wait a minute. Did she just call Shu, darling? Yep, yep, somebody's jealous! Reflexively, I examine her from her long hair to her delicate sandals. Yep, yep, somebody's sizing her up. She glances at me and smiles brilliantly. Even though she's older, she's definitely cute and way more charming than I'll ever be. I can see that at a glance. Ugh, what am I even why, what am I even thinking about this for? Sorry, I haven't been around lately. I, things have been really busy. It's quite alright. I know you're busy with school. If you're anything like me, you're spending half the time partying and other half studying. Well, I wouldn't say it's exactly like that. The woman turns slightly towards me. Every movement of hers is so graceful that I can't remotely imagine her as a party girl. Would you be so kind as to introduce this young, lovely young lady to me? Is she the girlfriend of one of you? No, she's she's no one's girlfriend. Oh, look at how look at how bashful how. Shu's bluffing, blushing. That's so cute. The discomfort on Shu's face, combined with the speed of in and intensity of his speech, serves to crush my to crush any little hopes I had in my heart. No, that just means. What are you talking about? Crush your hopes. That is a huge giveaway that he actually does like you, Hercora. Come on, come on. You need to understand. You need to understand how this works. It's just as well. I don't have time for a relationship right now, or an anytime soon. <laughs> Suit yourself, Arcora. But still, that was kind of harsh. Once again, Shinji jumps in to smooth things over. Sort of. If anything, she'd be more likely to be Tetsuya's girlfriend, judging by how they stared at each other for the first time they met. Really? Huh? Why is he bringing up Tetsuya out of nowhere? And would he just forget that already? You seem confused, honey, so let me introduce myself. My name is, Ch Ch is Chisaki. Yaki, Chisaki Yukimura, Chisaki. I'm Tetsuya's mother. Oh, seriously? How is that even possible? She looks so young. But now that I know, the resemblance seems obvious. Chisaki just beams at me while I process this, and I feel like a complete idiot. And I apologize for asking the question. I just thought you'd look good together with either of these boys. Yeah, I, 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 I'm with you there, honey. I'm with you there. Or my son, if you so choose. Shisaki's sweet voice goes a little quieter at the last sentence. I can't precisely put my finger on why, but it feels a little like a threat. Uh, well, thank you, but I'm nobody's girlfriend, Mrs. Yukimura. My name is Harkura Angel. I attend Hagiwara University. Hogwarts. Hagiwara or Hogwarts University. I'm wondering if that was on purpose. With these two. We share a lot of the same classes. She's from overseas, and I recently awakened her power, so I'm her partner. In fact, I'm showing her around a Chewbacca today. An annoyed voice interrupts the pleasant atmosphere. Mother, where's Ryoko? She was supposed to be washing dishes an hour ago. The voice comes closer to us, and soon I see Tatsuya's usual serious face. Standing next to his mother, they look like they could be siblings. Why are you guys here? Uh, cause we're eating breakfast, Tatsuya. Rude. Tatsuya, what have I told you about shouting about shouting about back room business in the front room? And these are your friends, you should treat them with kindness. Yeah, Tatsuya. Way to be, like, a total jerk face. Yes, mother. Now, why don't you, why didn't you tell me that there was a girl you were interested in? She seems lovely and well-spoken. Why would you hide her? Mother, what are you? I, why do you? 
Tetsuya splutters without really getting anything at for another moment or so before going to the last table behind us. He bends over and starts shaking whoever's in it. Starts shaking whoever's in it, clearly trying to avoid the subject. What the heck? I get that he's probably not the best at customer service, but still. Taku, get up. For the last time, you can't sleep in here. If you want to sleep, find some internet cafe or hotel. Or, you know, your bed. Tatsuya, are you ignoring me? N no, I just want... I just saw Takumi over here, and it looks like... It looks bad for business to have someone sleeping here, and... I hear a big yawn and see arms stretching upward on the other side of the table. Tatsuya looks immensely relieved. Takumi practically leaps up and gives us all a bright smile. Hi, Mrs. T Yukimura. Hey, Harkura. Oh, and hey, Tatsu and everyone else. You're here early. Don't hey me. You know I told you to stop sleeping in the cafe. It makes us look bad. Sorry. I even had a coffee this time, and I couldn't stay awake. That's okay, Takumi. I understand you've got a lot going on right now, and I'd rather you fall asleep here than not come at all. Well, I'm going back to work then. Who knows what time R Ryoko's going to get in. You should just fire her already, mother. Tatsuya, backroom business stays in the back room. And besides that, I will not. She already texted me saying she was running late because her apartment flooded this morning. She should be coming in soon. Oh, why don't you guys come with us then? We're showing our core around Chewbacca. Oh, that sounds fun. Tatsuya and Takumi, you both go along now. Young, attractive men like you should be hanging around places like this on a Saturday morning. Is Tatsuya's mom making a pass at his friends? Oh boy. Go and find a girlfriend. That's such an Asian thing to do. Why don't you have a girlfriend yet? Why aren't you married yet? <laughs> Despite her delicate frame, Chisaki easily punches the two men toward our table. I can say that because I'm Asian. <laughs> she then inclines her head ever so slightly and looks at me. It's been wonderful meeting you, Harkora. Take care of my boys, alright? I hope all of you will have a nice day then. But, mother, I... Shisaki turns swiftly on her heel and practically floats away, not looking back once. All right. Shu hops on, up on his seats and throws his arm around Tatsuya and Takumi's necks. I don't think we will ever... I don't think we've ever all been out together before. This is going to be a, so much fun. Define fun. Sounds awesome. Let's go. After we left Blue Sky, we headed out to explore Chua. I wasn't sure what to expect out of this, out of spending an entire day with a group of guys in a Sutram supernatural district, but it sure wasn't manga shops, arcades, food, and shopping. I was surprised by how normal and yet not normal Chewbacca dis the Chewbacca district was. With its eye doctors and florists, doctors that of course use magic, and florists that had a bizarre carnivorous plants, I didn't know what to think. But the most interesting part of the day by far was when Shu had taken me to Mizushima Crystals and tried to buy me what was called a gear crystal. Of course I'd refuse, but he insisted on helping me pick out pick one out. Ooh, do we actually get to pick pick one? Do I actually get a decision this chapter? We all discuss it as we move along the sidewalk to our next destination. I mean I'm glad we got the choice about squeezing his hand, but so I can really transform into magical clothes with this crystal? Oh yeah! Shu laughs, though I have no idea what I said was that was fun that was funny. Yeah, well, sort of. If you're thinking of magical girl shows, then no, it's not quite as fancy as that. Ah, oh, but that would be cool, wouldn't it? You have this own transformation sequence that takes like 15 seconds while the bad guy just stands there and lets you transform fully before he actually attacks you. Plus, in Bishujo shows, they always show their sexy silhouettes. That's true, and Taku, please. Angel, don't worry. Gear crystals give a lot more privacy than that. Yeah, it's just a flash of light, and then you're all decked out. Plus, you get the added benefits of whatever your gear adds to your powers. Oh, can, but can I at least do, like, the spinny move? Like, the spinny Wonder Woman? I totally want to just do the spinny Wonder Woman move, even though... Even though... I don't actually have to spin, but it just gives, you know, if it's just gonna flash and then I'm in my, decked out in my gear, I would totally do that. <laughs> I've never really had a use for mine, but... Oh, I want to see you transform, Shu! Every supernatural should have something. You never know when you'll have to use your powers. 
Shu had gotten his first gear crystal since he became an adult, too. He'd seemed so ecstatic to be able to buy our first adult ones together that I figured it was some kind of rite of passage. So, gear crystals can actually help you be more powerful. I swallow my doubts down. The last thing I need is to be more powerful. I had picked out the look on the digital catalog, but Shu insisted on picking the customization, so I didn't know what came with mine. The purchase was incredibly pricey too, since Shu had insisted on getting the best designer crystals for us both. Good thing I had my Shinamura corporate credit card with me. Hopefully Dad doesn't notice his charge. They can do many different things. A skilled enchanter can tell you what they do just by looking at a piece. Don't worry. I saw Shu pick, pick out your augments, and they're all geared towards what you need right now. They'll give you a big boost in focus in order to summon your power and boost in control to magic once you've summoned it. I kind of wish, again, that the game gave us uh, an ability to pick out our gear. Not necessarily pick out, like, the stats, because I know that might be really complicated, but at least what it looks like. Like, and it would just be a... It wouldn't have to be something that you would ever have to see again, so they wouldn't have to program me wearing the gear or me holding the gear. Um, because they would just have to show a few images, and then you would pick the image, and then that would be it. Like, you wouldn't have to actually see it again if they are worried about how the coding would work. But it would just be this really cool thing where, you know, you have the choice to pick out... So in your head, you know what your augment crystal looks like when you pick it out, even if it never actually appears on the screen ever again. Um, that would have been a really cool thing for them to do, and then it would just function the exact same way you know, it, 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 it wouldn't be as good, of course, as if you actually picked a different crystal, each with a different function, and that, and therefore that would change the rest of the game, but I'm not, you know, expecting... I wasn't expecting things that complicated, but, you know, another opportunity. I think, I mean, I, I, I again, I'm not... I'm not... I don't mean to, like, bash this game. I am enjoying playing this game. Uh, it's not bashing, it's more like just finding ways to improve. Like, if I, if I were one of the programmers of this game and I was like evaluating this game there are certain things that I see that are like opportunities that I think opportunities to improve you know and if I see like oh wouldn't it have been really cool if they had done this because I don't think it would have been that hard to do this um you know, like compared to compared to you know the full on pick a pick a different gear and they do different stuff um, because of because of the coding, how much more coding? This is like a easier thing that would go a long way, especially for role players like me, who you know would appreciate more choice um, uh, in these kind of things. I, I feel like people who play these kind of games would really appreciate that. It would have been a huge bang for their buck. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of. I just feel like playing this game. There's a lot of missed opportunities. And I just have to point them out because hopefully, if if uh, you know, if they decide to make a sequel or I don't know, make an update on this game, they might they might do some things to just really really give this game more oomph. And I picked the strongest one, so you shouldn't need to worry about losing control anymore. That's great. So when you feel like you're losing control again, you just need to use your gear crystal, and that should help. Really? Does that mean it's all over now? I don't have to be scared anymore? It seems too good to be true, but the confident look on all the guys' face tell me they believe it too. Thanks, guys. Especially you, Shu. I choose you, Shu. Oh, it was no problem at all. I'm just doing my job. I just wish you'd have let me buy it, or I would have made a cheaper one. Don't worry, I'm not hurting for money. Shu looks so despondent, though, I thought I'd try to cheer him up. But maybe next time, and you can help me choose my augments then, too. All right, I'm holding you to that. Hey, why don't you try out your gear crystal? Maybe see how your magic works now. Hey, yeah, that's a great idea. Try it. Right here? We're surrounded by passerby on the street. Granted, a lot of them are dressed strangely. It seems weird to change clothes out here on the street. Is that, um, normal to do? Which is a valid question. People don't usually do it out in public unless it's an emergency, but I don't think anyone's going to care too much. Besides, I'm interested to see if your control has improved too. Well, okay, here goes. We step out of the way of the passerby into a covered patio area. Reaching into the fancy bag, I take out the jewelry box. I put the crystal necklace around my neck and hold the pendant. Can I just say, like, moon crystal power makeup? <laughs> just focus your energy into the necklace. Oh, oh, wow. 
Look at her! I can't believe it actually worked! It's entirely disorienting to suddenly be clad in different clothing, and a little embarrassing to be dressed like this. But I already feel... different. How's it feel? Good! I feel... calm. It's strange. I feel more powerful, too. That's probably just a psychological effect of wearing the armor. I know how I feel more. I feel I'm more, more of a bad A in my gear. You look super cool in it, though. Or it might be because you're finally feeling like your power is under control. Try summoning something. Summoning something? Sum like, like what? Hmm, let's see. I think one of the earliest things they teach you to do is to defend yourself. So maybe some kind of a force field? A wah? Like an invisible shield. Every kind of magic has their own way of defending themselves, but I think a shield would be what's natural for you, too. Oh, that's right. We went, uh, we went over that in our study sessions. Remember, Harkura? I think it over and recall a section on defense early in our textbooks. Uh, Expelliamos? It didn't say anything about force field or shield specifically. In fact, I found nothing about my particular brand of magic in those beginner texts. But it did cover various methods of summoning defenses. Now, what did I have to do? Throw out a hand, will your power to rise up, calm yourself and focus. I want to be physical, throw out a hand out. Immediately I think of the magic I've seen used on TV and what people do to create shields. That might work, right? I throw a hand out in front of me, imagining an energy shield of some sort popping out in front of me. But nothing happens. What were you trying to do exactly? Um, I was trying to make a shield? I decide against mentioning that I was attempting to copy something off of a TV show. I should have realized that it's a dumb idea. Try sensing out your powers first. Try to feel how it flows naturally and it will do what you want it to do. Okay, I think I can do that. I take a deep breath and close my eyes. I focus on imagining a shield all around me, protecting me. Holding a hand out almost subconsciously, I feel a surge of... something? Power? Emanate from me briefly? The power seems to move out past my body and surround me. I can distinctly feel the presence of the guys without even popping my eyes. Pop without even opening my eyes, and it completely distracts me. Whoa! I open my eyes just in time to see a transparent green colored spherical thing disappear around me. I stumble back in surprise, and Shu catches me by the arm. Awesome! You did it! Your first spell! You can just use that to protect you now, if you can remember how to do it. But why did you stop just when you'd gotten into it? Would choose when just when you'd gotten it? It was just a strange sensation. I felt like I could feel you guys. It's hard to describe. Oh, I've heard of that happening with some spells and types of magics. They say you can feel a person's aura or soul that way, though I never have. It's technically considered ether magic, ether magic, I believe. Oh, Samantha, we've got some Kenna. We've got some Kenna in here. Tatsuya is talking about some Kenna magic. Really? I looked down at my hands, amazed that, that I really did that at, at all. Is it possible for a, mu human, for a human to have such power? Ah, that's right, but I'm not human. I try to shake off the bad feelings that are tainting my brief victory, but they still linger at the back of my mind. After being shown around a few more places, we finally head to the Joy Trendy Coffee House in the Upscale District. A coffee house that is all too familiar. When we sit down at the coffee bar, memories of my last day with Shizuka begin flooding back to me. I look over at the seats where we were just sitting a few weeks ago. Harkura? Huh? We were asking what you wanted to drink, are you okay? Oh, uh, and iced coffee is fine. Everyone looks at me, seeming not to trust me completely. It's a little irritating, but I'm starting to understand that they're only concerned. With good reason, considering my last outbursts. Get it together, Harkura. When the barista moves to take another group's order, I force myself to elaborate. These guys are always trying to help me. The least I can do is open up a little so they don't worry. I'm okay, I just... I think I've been here before. Really? How is that possible? My... mother. She asked me to meet her here a few weeks ago. I'd never been a, I've never been to this area before and I came in a totally different way, but I'm sure this is the place. A silence falls upon the table as, a, as what I said seemed to sink in. Every one of their faces is serious. It's then I realized that I never told any of them what had happened between me and Shizuka. I look down at the counter. I want to, but the words just won't come. How can I possibly tell them about something like that anyway? I shake my head, not wanting to think about it, not wanting to remember the feelings of helplessness and fear. 
You know, Harkura, ever since I've met you, there's been this kind of sadness about you. I've always wanted to cheer you up, but I never knew what to do. Aww. But today, today's the first time I've ever seen you really happy before we came in here. Whatever happened between you and your mom? Well, we've all got parents that our own issues with them. So we can probably understand, at least a little. If you ever want to talk, that is. I'm embarrassed by Shu's outdoor of emotion, but I'm touched too. Thanks, Shu. One day, I'll tech you up on that. You know, I keep so busy, I don't have time to think about much. Maybe you could do the same. If you fill up your nights and weekends, you won't have you won't have time to think about the bad thing. Oh, come on, Tatsu. Not everyone is a workaholic like you. Though I do agree. Tatsu and I are both rarely home, and we almost never think about our problems. We live in blissful ignorance. We live in blissful ignorance. Oh, we live in blissful Yeah, that's still Takumi. Takumi stretches back and puts his hand behind his head, truly seeming happy with life. It's a gesture of lightheartedness that seems to stir something in the back of my mind. This place is hiring, actually. I work here, so I could put in a good word for you. Seriously? You work here? I had no idea. But, I don't know. It's kind of a shameful to admit this, but I never actually had a job before. Aw, oh, don't worry about that. Sometimes you just need to take a leap of faith. Something clicks in my brain that some final piece of a puzzle that I didn't know I'd been solving. This nagging feeling of fami familiarity I've been feeling with Takumi since we first met suddenly makes so much sense. Taku? Yeah? Hey, wait! You you finally remembered me? I can't believe it took me so long. I can't believe it took me so long. I guess I've just been so wrapped up in my own problems, but still. I'm so sorry, how could I forget you? You were Hello there! Whoa, I think that's a girl. Hello there! Everyone jumps to the side of the newcomer, except for Shinji, who calmly takes another sip of his drink without looking at- Oh, it's, it is a man. I couldn't tell. It looked like it looked like his chest was a little- was a little boobier than, than a, a guy's, but okay. He seemed to literally appear behind us, carrying a, a, our tray of drinks. Now he smoothly moves behind the counter and doles out the drinks with perfect accuracy. I'm Gallen, the manager and owner here. I couldn't help but overhear that the young lady might be looking for a job. Okay, Caratop. That's... I don't know. It's all so sudden. Now, now, there's no need to be shy. There's actually a few open positions here. If Shinji is recommending you, then there's no problem. Well, actually, I don't even need a job technically, and with my studies... It's good to get all kinds of experiences while you're so very young. And besides, Shinji and I really could use the help around here. Gallon sighs rather dramatically. Ugh, that's the dramatic sigh. Good help can be so difficult to find. Well, okay, I, I guess you're right. Splendid! I'll waive the application process and hire you immediately. As long as I don't have to wear any flair. Gallon produces a paper from seemingly nowhere and hands it to me. It has a checklist of requirements like ID and other legal papers. Bring those things on Tuesday at 4 p.m. and you can fill out the rest of the paperwork then. Ooh! Sir, if you have multiple positions open, I'm actually looking for another job right now. Could I... Please ask my assistant manager Shinji for a recommendation. Or if that doesn't work for you, you can submit an application instead. Ask Shinji? No way. Well, if you reconsider, you know where I'll be. Toodaloo! <laughs> I like this guy. I like this guy. As, as fast as he can, as he came, Gallon wiggles his fingers and farewell! In farewell and leaves! What just happened? Tatsuya looks at Shinji and everyone looks at the two, expectant. Well, if you'd like a recommendation, I'd be more than happy to give it to you. If you'll ask nicely, that is. I'd rather go broke first. I'll submit an application. Aw, oh, Tatsu, why do you have to be so stubborn? Takumi sighs and then turns to me. Congratulations on your new job, Arkura, and on finally remembering me. Takumi picks up his glass of orange juice and holds it up. So who, who are you? Arkura still hasn't said who he is. It isn't as good as beer, but cheers. Cheers! 
I raised my coffee cup feeling a little silly, but also feeling happier than I have in months. I might have finally made some good friends here. I don't even notice the girl sitting across from me with the bright blue earrings. Yes.